Hello, it's Michael Tellinger and I'm with my good friend Alosha Lainoff who's come all the way from Johannesburg to visit me here at the Stone Circle Ubuntu Village and the head office and we've come into the mountains to the ruins, the Stone Circles to see and observe and ground and connect with the ancient ruins and also to talk about um, the how we're going to integrate organic uh, uh, organic design and permaculture and cosmic geometries into the new one small town movement. Yeah, so just to give you a quick background about Alosha and uh, I highly recommend you go online and watch uh, his videos to do with permaculture, with uh, water um, uh, capturing, with turning your garden into a beautiful productive um, ecosystem that is all self-sustainable and brown water and grey water and everything all that kind of stuff plus also he's a master designer and inventor of note and you'll see some of his, the work that he's done uh, I've known Alosha for about 10 years now and uh, and I've just always marveled at the spectacular designs that's how I first got to know him was through his design work and he's how he has evolved and just become a real expert in the field of of survival and uh so thrival so, so, so thrival, thrival yes so. so yeah and also at this stage it uh, it looks like Alosha is going to join us here in Vardafal Burfen at the Ubuntu head office and the Stone Circle head office and really start turning it into a, a vibrant or help me turn it into a vibrant home base for the Ubuntu movement around the world. And uh, a sample, and a sample of what uh, Michael and myself have been preaching about of these new age, new ways of building uh, using and utilizing waste in building and utilizing waste and irrigation and food forest, all these great things that we've been talking for the last 10 years. We want to actually create a living sample of it so people can experience it for yeah. themselves. And it's obviously, we'd like to have this at the Ubuntu head office, uh, so when people come visit us, we, are, we have a beautiful environment for them to come stay mm. in and mm. visit us and, and interact. And this is why um, many people are aware of it, that we're building the, the Ubuntu Retreat Center, the Ubuntu Conference Center, and the Ubuntu Academy at our premises here by the Elans River in Vardafal Burfen. And Alosha's input and his take on all these beautiful sacred geometric ways of building the most incredible building styles that you'll see in images. I trust you're going to insert some of the imagery yes, definitely. into this video that we, that we intend to bring here, that he will bring teach us and do workshops and training on new different style of building that is completely harmonious and green kind of building. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a whole new chapter and a new door that we're opening in, in uh, Stone Circle Ubuntu's history uh, because we are growing so quickly now and expanding mm. so quickly around the world that this is the time where we need the right-minded people with the right skills and expertise to come and join us here and start growing and building the foundation ever stronger. So, where do we take it from here? Well, um, I'd like to do this video particularly on um, what's your take uh, so I've got your model about one small town movement that's fantastic I actually so my missing piece was I see these decapitated old towns that are also square and linear how do we bring this organic architecture and permaculture into this town um, yeah. because I, I don't want to be gridded up by the grids of the roads and the square houses no. um, and what Michael was explaining last night that as the town grows that's where the geometric um, town planning and permaculture can proceed and what we came with last night was the people staying in the townships in the in the shacks in these decapitated tin houses they can they will love to move into the older town but the new town will be built with roads following contour lines so the roads become the water harvesting uh, earthworks channeling water to the dams and of course the food forests. So I'd just yeah. like you to elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, so um, obviously um, there's a process. You know, the moment we initiate the one small town um, plan of action, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff's going to start happening. Mm. Obviously it's not going to happen, happen overnight, but, but one of the things that's going to happen is to bring in uh, out-of-the-box thinkers, town planners uh, and uh, town 
engineers and people that are in touch with sacred geometry and mm. the natural flow of energy mm. and bring those experts in to start redesigning the existing town to break the grid structure uh, the the matrix and the, the that energetic trap that our cities city blocks and 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 uh, the whole living environment is being constructed it's mm. it's pretty much a trap for us mm. for so what you're saying is we don't need to decapitate <laughs> all the old uh, uh, no. roads and no. walkways it's about maybe placing the right stones Absolutely. at the right places yes. to welcome the energies of uh, ancestors yes. and the earth uh, yes. geomancy. geomancy geomancy and and real un recognition and comprehension of how to fix the broken energies mm. and they are incredible people ibrahim karim's work is spectacular in that field yeah. and many of his students and other people like him that we possibly don't even know about they are masters of 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 uh, rehabilitating the energetic flow and fixing the energetic flow restoring it so you open up the flow in our towns so part of the process of of creating new um, new industry and when I say industry I mean by you know eco-friendly and new technology and new ways of growing food and new ways of building houses and new everything that we do in this one small town is going to be uh, biodegradable uh, organic eco-friendly eco natural organic, materials because yeah. that's how we start building things so, so that's the blueprint that drives behind the one small town yes. movement it's a set blueprint so I've, I've been saying now for the last uh, at least one year closer to two years now that that uh, the one small town model is a solution for all the problems we face as the human race because it opens up the doors to all the experts and the people with the best knowledge to, to mm. bring their knowledge and their expertise to the one small town model and plug it in so that we can utilize it for the greater benefit of everyone in the town first of all obviously because that's how it works mm. but also for the so that whatever we build now the new foundations that we're building and fixing the old structures and the old foundations will never have to be fixed again great so what you just just to recap what you're saying is we fix the old town by bringing in uh, the correct earthworks by bringing in geomancy to to get the good energy flow by planting in fruit trees on the sidewalks and pavements so greening really regreening the deserts and then the new town movement will be a design using uh, contaline earthworks food forests um, the roads that harvest water, the dams and ponds in between, and a whole holistic new way of structures and more dome structures, more organic structures that follow our shapes and, and liquid, liquidity of nature. Absolutely. If you look at ancient civilizations and if you look at the stone circles, actually we're right in the heart of ancient civilizations, right here. We're standing right in the middle of it. In Umpumalanga. The, the yeah. oldest civilization on earth that we know that left behind the largest cluster of ancient ruins. We're right in the middle of it as we're speaking. So um, we just found a new ruin right up there behind us on, on the edge of that hill uh, because they chopped down the forest here, the, the plantation recently. So suddenly mm. you, you could see all the other ruins that were lying hidden by the the, the, the man-made mm. plantation here for Sapi, the, the paper company. Yeah. So, um, so you'll see that ancient civilizations, they never built square things, everything was round. And for those that have watched my, my workshops and presentations, you'll mm. see that, that the, in fact, the way they built their structures were based on the cymatic patterns that come out of the earth. Right, wow. so the energy wow. fields that come out of the earth was what in harmony with what, what how they built the stone circles. So it it may be that we try some of some of this kind of architecture in our new small towns, uh, one small town strategy to to see how we can find the energy f uh, coming out of the earth and actually build our homes and our structures according to the flow of those energies. So we're talking about temple homes, harmonious environments that heal people. That's what yeah. we'll be building. And Michael, just a, a quick question. So I wasn't in residence with one small town until uh, where I come from is I, I'm more merging on Anastasia movement of one hectare kinder mains and uh, the Venus project Jacques Fresco of building new cities. Um, but what Michael is saying is we do not need to go and create new cities from scratch because we have thousands and thousands of decapitated towns that can be refired up yes. with Michael's model of the one small town movement and I got it last night because if everybody in the town puts in three hours uh, a, week. a week a week we calculated something like it's 15,000 hours and for 
20 or 30 industries that's in the town that's that's a lot of working manpower you, 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 well just if you have and remember our model of a one small town that we're promoting around the world is based on towns between five and ten thousand inhabitants mm. so if you take a town of five thousand people and everybody gives us three hours a week towards the projects and the new initiatives that we're mm. starting uh, mm. that's fifteen thousand hours a week you, you need mm. a lot of projects for to, to put fifteen thousand hours of labor yeah. to work so you can just if you just think of it like that that means we're gonna have a town that's gonna be a vibrant place from arts and culture and recreation to tourism to new industry mm. fr from the growing food just the growing of the food and the different aspects of the food the, the the harvesting of the food the packaging the preparing the the preserving of the foods of the jams and all those kinds yeah. of things the food growing itself is a, it's a huge massive industry, industry. Yeah. that'll probably create you know 40 or 50 or a hundred little sub uh, businesses or mm. projects for the community that'll mm. keep a lot of people busy yeah so uh, my one question was well uh, three hours just some sounds like a very little time but the way that Michael explained and we actually brainstormed it together what I got was right now the scenario is you have five ten percent of the town grafting 12 hour days and a lot of and in, in South Africa in particular and the rest are unemployed was Michael's model we balance that out we get everybody involved at three hours so it kind of works out as everybody as what currently people are doing was 12 hours a day but now it's everybody does three hours and everybody else has time to do other great things with there and get creative and play a flute and do things they've always dreamt of but they never had time for so the the other benefits uh uh, and I want to bring it back to your expertise because you know the reason you're going to join us here is because mm. we're going to create we're going to create an example of, of what har works harvesting what works. harvesting natural water rainwater the, the the gray and the brown water and all that and showing how that can be recycled and utilized and reused to beautify your immediate environment which is really what I've been talking about about the one small town because the water is the start the without water, water we actually got no gain it's the energy the electricity right now we call energy electricity uh, at some stage the electricity will probably change into a different form of energy but that's probably further down the road mm. so let's talk about electricity for now once we have our source of electricity we can pretty much do everything and anything we choose and this is why the foundation of electricity is so important to launch the one small town mm. without mm. our own source of electricity we are forever enslaved and stuck in the matrix and 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 held captive by the the suppliers to the energy grid and those that have claimed the right to provide us with electricity and that's what that's why a majority of the people can't get off the grid because first it's very expensive and uh, and if you stop paying your bills then they can't they, they, defer, they can't cut your water they're not allowed to but they can't cut your electricity yeah. so electricity is a biggie it's it's a big thing and we're gonna change that uh, very quickly as you may know already uh, we have a international partner in electricity and energy also water and also creating health uh, health benefits to all this activity. So when we say we're going to go into a town and provide our own electricity, mm. I can now say it with absolute confidence because of our partner. That will become known to the people and the mayors and the councils and the people of the town once they've agreed to implement the, the small town uh, project now for example mayor Ron Higgins in Canada is already talking to our energy partners in Canada to see how we're going to implement that electricity mm. for the whole town and the whole community and the entire area it is advanced technology that very few people have seen it is technology that most people don't even understand the benefits are, are spectacular the benefits are purifying of water d uh, removing hazardous waste and I'm talking about Pretty much any kind of hazardous waste you can imagine radioactive Toxic, including radioactive hazardous waste of any kind wow all the wow. all the horrible <laughs> stuff that 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 comes out of hospitals the syringes the 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 drugs that are not used that are expired what do we do with those we can't just flush them down the toilet yeah. or or put them in the water system or bury them bury them in the so ground your, your electricity machine basically can handle that as well so when we start a one small town we provide a solution for electricity for treating our water the sewage and all the the hazardous waste at the same time it is a it is a spectacular solution that we bring to the small town but the water can be obviously polished up with a few constructed wetlands it will only do not, it good not only that so so not only will we help uh, 
purify the water and, mm -hmm. and make it incredibly energized and structured water that makes things grow and actually heals your body at the same time. We've got spectacular... So we're talking about implosion, vortexing, that type of we're thing. We're talking that kind of technology. Okay, great, yeah. great. But, but at the same time, you're right. So that water, now that we're going to be treating our water, we can then tr push it back into all the, way, the ways that we're going to re-engineer and re... Um, uh, landscape our towns yes, and our yes, environment yes which is where your expertise comes exactly in. so I can't wait for you to 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 wind up your stuff in Johannesburg <laughs> and move out here into the mountains you know can't get a better place than this yeah uh, and uh, or you have to go a long way to find a better place than this yeah. right in the mountains in the heart of the ancient civilizations we literally drive out of our front door and or we walk out of our front door and we're right there. <laughs> we're mm. in the ruins. Fantastic. You know, when we were digging the foundations for some of the the buildings at Stone Circle Ubuntu head office, um, we we find ancient ruins and tools and artifacts right there. Wow. In wow. on our own place. So it's the Stone Circle head office and the Ubuntu head office is actually built on ancient civilizations and ancient ruins. That's fantastic. But when you just sure. leave out, we drive out. We're literally five minutes away from our office in the mountains. Yeah out of our little town right here there are thousands and thousands of ruins around us everywhere here so the energy is already <clears throat> here and phenomenal so we so we're calling upon any wizards that want to get involved in uh, awesome projects yes uh, we'll be posting a form a link to a form below and uh, if you're interested to help in any way uh, for the movement whether you have permaculture or natural building or you want to learn some stuff or you can project manage some stuff we're looking for great wizards that we can co-create this movement together on a global scale yeah would you like to say uh, something a little yeah, bit about yeah, that? yeah exactly but also one of the one of the things that uh, we intend to do very soon um, even this year still uh, towards the end of the year probably around November December is to initiate a bunch of uh, projects a bunch of workshops should I say actually we're gonna have start with one workshop one it's workshop. a seven and one workshop where you're gonna learn California earth uh, sandbags structures um, biochar filtration uh, um, bubble geometry from Dome Gaia it's a lot all the workshops that I've attended all over the world gray water construction food forest and grow by intensive we're going to be running one mother one month workshop here to get uh, the land that Ubuntu headquarters kick-started fired up and you're going to learn seven different eco techniques practically hands-on with us at these headquarters coming up this December yeah so this is really what we're planning and uh, just been brainstorming a little bit and I just get really charged up and inspired by Alosha's work and you will see some of his designs and his absolute genius when we start doing our Ubuntu events especially uh, the Ubuntu fest here in South Africa in Batplas from the 12th to the 15th of April 2018 where Alosha's designs and uh, and staging and Structures. Fabric structures. Mm. This, we did, that's really how I got to know him originally ten years ago. It's just spectacular, and you'll you'll know what I mean. But what he's really blown me away is the way that he's become an expert and a master, and actually he 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 practices practices what he preaches mm. uh, even in Johannesburg in the middle of this concrete jungle and the urban bloody jungle uh, got my house off the water grid without the use of any boreholes uh, using earthworks a few sandbag storage containers that mold to a house like hand and glove We've got two robust biochar filter and it's all low cost and um, and we're harvesting rain from a thatch roof believe yeah. it or not storing it in my pool using my pool as a buffer in winter so it goes down <laughs> when the, we need water and then in, in summer the pool tops up and nine constructed wetlands and I've created an online abundance of water course I'll give you the link here and it's really fantastic that uh, you, with this course you can get off the grid anywhere on the planet for as little as a thousand dollars to at least halve your water consumption so it's a really awesome course and I'll be implementing these things at Ubuntu headquarters practically so We'll wind up this little chat um, and say I look forward to you joining us here and to imp start implementing some of these things and mm. uh, and it's going to be an exciting journey and as Alosha said uh, our doors are open uh, email me at uh, contact at ubuntuplanet.org and uh, and tell us that you'd like to join us or go onto our website and sign up under the volunteer uh, page 
and uh, so we can reach out back to you and start bringing like-minded people together here at the Stone Circle Ubuntu Head Office and create turning our environment into a, a living example of what we're talking about. And it's just a fun time. Actually, it's, 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 it's about getting a bunch of like-minded people together, having a great time together, doing incredible things. Mm. Very dynamic. Same, yeah. And we're being the change that we want to see. It's enough talk here. Let's make it happen. Let's create a new reality that we've all been dreaming about. So we'll see you in Waterfall Boefen. One small town at a time. <laughs>